Today I'm excited to show you how to install Red Hat Single Sign-On on your OpenShift local environment so that you can build cloud applications that have user logins and APIs that are authenticated and provide role-based access control to your data. It's really powerful and I want to show you how to integrate it with your existing PostgreSQL operator automated with Ansible to keep your passwords in sync from the beginning. And so let's get started. I'm going to log into my OpenShift local environment, CRC start. And it's already running here, so I can go to the URL, to the console. So we've already installed the PostgreSQL operator. Let's go to the Postgres namespace, Crunchy Postgres. This is our cluster. And the code for this is in github.com slash computate-org slash martabyer smart village. Take a look at the OpenShift customize bundles, Postgres, app, Postgres clusters, Postgres cluster. Oops, not that one, this one, Postgres cluster. I've added some cool new features because we want to set up a database in our existing Postgres. If you don't, then Keycloak will set up its own Postgres database, but I don't want two pods running Postgres. That's, that's unnecessary and takes up resources. So I'll use one Postgres and I'll create a database called SSO with a user that can authenticate it called SSO here. And you'll see that in the Petroni configuration, I can update the PGHBA to allow on hosts the SSO database and the SSO user to connect on all addresses using MD5 password authentication. That's what we want to be able to connect. So that's already set up. Now we will install a different operator, which is the SSO base. This will install a namespace for SSO, an operator group in the namespace, and a subscription to the Red Hat Single Sign-On operator, and then an Argo CD application to install everything else. Let's try this out. We need to grab, let's see, we need to grab a token, so we copy the login command for kube admin. Display token, grab this, paste it in the terminal, and we're good to go. Next, I will go into the code, home slash dot local src smarta by our smart village. And we will run oc dash, no, oc apply dash K for customize, open shift, customize, bundles, SSO, base. Now, if we take a look at Argo CD, go into the Argo CD namespace routes and pull up Argo CD, okay. Now we have an SSO application and it says it's synced already. Let's check out the SSO namespace that was just created and look at installed operators. And here is the Red Hat single sign-on operator. Cool. Now it should have already created a key cloak, which it did. So let's take a look at this. So that's pretty simple, but you'll see 
that it's configured external database enabled true. So that expects there to be a secret deployed in the namespace. Let's go to workloads, secrets, keycloak db secret. Now this has several values, the database, and addresses and ports and a, and a password. Now this is interesting. Where did this come from? Let's go to the vault because this is where I've already set up the vault, but let's go change the password. Let's go to networking, routes, in the vault namespace. Pull up the vault, sign in, fireware, SSO database secret. So this just has one secret in it. And we want to update this. So let's create a new version. And I'll show you what it is here. You can either do it as JSON or regular. Now, if I want this password to be something like this, this is saved. And because we've set up uh, an external secret, We'll check out home, search, external secret. Then the external secrets operator will automatically update this thing. So you'll see here that the password is starts with SNW. If I update the vault and save this, then the password should immediately change because of the external secrets operator, and it does. Now it's updated and it's in sync with the vault. Isn't that cool? Now the problem is um, Postgres didn't, does not know about this password already. So if we take a look at Keycloak, the pod for Keycloak, let's see if it's happy. We go to logs. Let's delete this pod. So this is failing. Let's see why it's failing. Caused by password authentication failed for user SSL. That makes sense because Postgres has a different password for the SSO user. I'll show you. Um, let's go to secrets. Postgres namespace, you'll see that if you filter by PG user, it's created two of these. So this one for PG user SSO has a value of SNW, which is the old password, which doesn't match. Keycloak. 
So we need to get these in sync. I've written some Ansible automation for this. So we type Ansible playbook OpenShift Ansible. And then let's take a look. It's the SSO configure database playbook. So if I run this as is, it's not going to be able to connect to OpenShift because we need a token. So we need to set this. We'll take this and we'll do dash E. Red Hat OpenShift token equals, let's go back to our token here and grab this, put this in here. So when this runs, it's going to look up this password that we set from the vault within this SSO secret, and it's going to copy it to the Postgres secret. So SNW is going to change. Watch. You run this, it's going to patch that value, and sure enough, now it changed. So these are now in sync. If we go to our keycloak pod and delete this, because we just upgraded Postgres, let's restart our keycloak and check that everything looks good. Looks like no more errors. So that looks like it's running. Let's take a look at the routes. Networking routes. Key cloak. Let's give it just a moment. There it is. Administration console. We are good to go. Now I'm not going to log in right now. There's a lot more to explain about Red Hat Single Sign-On in future videos. So that's it for today. I hope you learned how to install Red Hat Single Sign-On, set up the database, and hope that was useful. Thanks for watching.